Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush, and this time we're going to look at two brushes that actually make 3D shapes, not like the wire or the icing, but actually three-dimensional shapes that we're going to paint with. I'm talking about the spikes and the lofted brushes. These are on the fourth page, and now these two brushes actually do extruded shapes like the wire, as opposed to a flat brush stroke like most of our brushes. Most of these brushes are flat strokes like a paintbrush, but the spikes and the lofted are painting with three-dimensional objects. I'm going to start with the spikes and set to a nice neutral blue-gray. Now when I paint this, we've got our larger and smaller as usual. I'm going to go larger so you can see this shape. Spike is always a triangle. Spike. 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 So you can see it's a three-dimensional triangular spike. Where you start is the base and where you let go is the point. So you can make short spikes or long spikes, and depending on how big your base is, that's what's going to determine how broad that spike is. Narrow spike versus a wide spike. So spikes are pretty straightforward. They, say, they do exactly what they say on the tin. And as you can see, they are shaded objects. So if I draw around them, you can see that they do cast shadows on each other. Now with a spike, if you draw a long wavy spike, as long as you do it fairly slow, fairly gentle, you can really extend these spikes for a long distance. But if you move too quickly, if I wave it like this, you'll see it doesn't make one long spike, but it actually breaks it up into several different spikes. There are a couple cases where you can see there are different spikes, each with its own base. S lower end systems like PlayStation and Quest will break up a bit more. A higher end system like a PC might be able to keep them together a little bit more, but even a higher end PC will start to break into chunks if you jagged just a little too quickly. But if you take your time, you can see how even here the curve was too steep, so it did break it into two separate spikes. Now we can, with our straight edge, make our spike perfectly straight. Or we can do the ever popular circle trick and actually bend this spike into a circle. So as you can see, one end is going to be our thick triangle and the other end comes to a sharp point tapering the entire time. Yes, this does mean if you're on the PC or even the PlayStation, you can turn this circle into a full sphere spike. Now you can see how the base is thicker and skinnier at the top. If we stretch this out to make the full bowl style, I'm on a very high PN NPC, so it's going to take a lot of effort to make the bowl. But even then, you'll notice that it's going to go from a very small size to a very large size. Let me shrink this guy down, and you can see what I'm talking about here. It's obvious where the top narrow point is to the bottom thicker point. It's a lovely effect for the sphere using the spike. Spike tool is always a point, always a three-sided triangle. As opposed to the other one, the lofted, this is more like a four-sided crystal. It's going to be pointed at both ends and a four-sided square shape in the middle. Again, without a straight edge, you can make it bendy. If you move it too quick, you can see how it breaks it into separate crystals. It's not one long one. If we do it slowly, we can keep it one long crystal. But if we do it too quickly, it'll break it up into separate crystals. But these are four-point four-sided objects. So if I blow that up and move it around, you can see that's a four-sided crystal.
This means if we do set our straight edge in place, we can make these wonderful sort of crystal shapes. I'm going to have a bunch of crystals growing out of a space right here. So we can see how these crystal shapes can be used creatively, either with a straight edge for perfectly straight crystals, or we can bend them around as much as we need. But it's still going to be four-sided, shaded shapes. Lofted is what this one is called. We're not sure why. But with this lofted shape, just like everything else, with the straight edge going, we can go into circle mode. Sometimes easier than others, circle mode. Now, because it is pointed at both ends, it is going to be pointed where that circle meets. Four sides, so it's going to shade as four sides all the way around, but pointed on the ends. So if we do a sphere with it, Circle, and around into a sphere. On a PC, this is a very tightly woven sphere. On the PlayStation, it's a much looser sphere. Quest doesn't get the sphere at all, yet. But for now, I'm gonna grab this guy so we can see he's still made up of that four square shape so we can see these ridges all the way around. And if we look at the very base, we can see that pointed end. Or on this side, we can see that pointed end. Pointed end. So the lofted shape and the spike shape are tools and brushes we can use, both straight or curvy. They give us a three-dimensional shaded shape that we're working with, as opposed to a round wire or icing. Plus, we can use our straight edge tricks with these guys just like everything else. It's the spike and the lofted. Now, we've also got this comet, which is very similar. The comet is also a regular shape. It's blunt on one end and pointed on the other. The difference is it's animated like the fire. It's also translucent. So if I turn, you'll notice you can see right through it. But it's always got a point on one end and it always tapers out to the other end. Because it's translucent, we can overlap and make it glow so we can do stars and suns and things like that. But it's similar to these other shapes in that it's always going to hold that regular shape, point on one end, taper to the other. As always, if we make a circle out of it, point at one end tapered out to the other end. It maintains its animation, but it also maintains that shape. And yes, indeed, once again, as always, if we spheroid this guy, it's got thicker at one end, tapered and fading out on the other end. This is almost like a wine glass. with the animation shimmering through it. So these shapes, they hold their shape no matter how you paint with them, but we can then use that effect, whether we're going for spheres and circles, or we're going for these straight edge crystals with regular sides. All of these three tools are about drawing a three-dimensional shape instead of a regular brush stroke. We've got Comet, Spike, and Lofted, all as ways of making these things work. So I'm going to leave these guys in the background and do my usual subscription message here. But that's what we're talking about today, these new shape tools. Let's go for a vibrant color in the uh, lofted this time. So let us know if there's other shapes and tools you want us to cover. This is done as a weekly lesson live on Twitch TV and also archived on YouTube.com. Both places were known as Shameless Mayhem. Let us know if there's other tilt brush tools you'd like us to cover or any techniques. Have fun. I look forward to seeing what you guys make in tilt brush. Take care, everybody.